Chapter 22, Earth's Evolution. Earth is Earth unique. Earth is the only planet in the solar system to support light. Sorry. Earth is the only planet in the solar system that can support light. Earth is the right planet in the right location, the right time. The Goldilocks scenario. The right planet. The Earth is the right size. Larger planets retain a thick, hostile atmosphere. Smaller planets have a thin, non-existent atmosphere. Earth has plate tectonics, the formation of continental crust. Earth has a molten metallic core, causes a magnetic field that protects the Earth from cosmic rays. If the Earth were 10% closer to the Sun, it would be too hot for liquid water, the atmosphere would be like Venus. If Earth was 10% farther from the Sun, it would be too cold for liquid water. The Sun is a modest sized star, a lifespan of 10 billion years. A larger star would burn out in a few million years. The atmosphere, Earth's early atmosphere lacked oxygen. Primitive photosynthesis, synthetic organisms added oxygen to the atmosphere 2.5 billion years ago. We had mass extinction. 65 million years ago, an asteroid struck the Earth, killed all the non-avian dinosaurs, and let the mammals to become the dominant terrestrial organisms. The geologic time scale is quite, quite vast, um, and covers quite a large time, starting from the Cambrian, the Hadean, the Archean, the Proterozoic, and then the Phanerozoic. And in the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic, it's time we lose life. In the Cenozoic, we have our time is in the Holocene. The history of Earth began about 13.7 billion years ago with the Big Bang. From the Big Bang to heavy elements, hydrogen and helium formed shortly after the Big Bang. Heavier elements are created in stars. A supernova event occurred when a star explodes and creates the heaviest elements. From planetismals to protoplanets, the solar system formed a solar nebula, a rotating cloud of interstellar dust and glass gases. Most material condensed in the center of the solar nebula to form a protosun. Remaining debris forms a flattened disk rotating around the protosun. Repeated collisions of debris form asteroid-sized planetismals rotating around the protosun. Repeated collisions and accretions of planetismals form protoplanets and moons. First moon formed from the collision of a Mars-sized object hit the Earth. Now here a Big Bang, helium and hydrogen was formed, or galaxy forms. And then supernovas in our galaxy form super heavy metals. Eventually, our solar nebula got enough that mass to start to condense um, and to spin. A small protosun formed in the middle, and in bands of lighter elements were on the outside. Materials started colliding from planetismals, and then eventually planets. Um, and our little protoplanets have formed. A large object, Mars size, hit the Earth. Has a lot of debris to ring the Earth. Eventually, became a moon. And then eventually, we have our gas and produce Earth's atmosphere. So repeated collisions with planetismals and the decay of radioactive elements cause Earth's temperature to increase. That's the beginning of the Hadean Eon, the beginning of that geologic time chart I showed you. Iron and nickel melted and sank to form metallic core, while less dense material rose to form the mantle and the crust. Earth's primitive atmosphere consists mainly of hydrogen, helium, methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and water vapor. Hydrogen and helium escaped into, the spa into space. Enhanced by outgassing, gases trapped within the Earth and released the volcanism process continues today. There's some outgassing. Oxygen in the atmosphere, water vapor condensed into clouds, rain filled Earth's oceans. Approximately 3.5 billion years ago, photosynthesizing bacteria began to release oxygen to Earth's oceans. Initially, ocean bonded with dissolved iron and oxygen bonded with, with dissolved iron in the oceans, formed banded iron formations, alternating layers of iron rich rocks and chert, important reservoirs of iron ore. Here's some banded iron formations. Eventually, oxygen began to build up in the atmosphere. The great oxygenation event occurred 2.5 billion years ago. Positive impact on the development of aerobic life forms wiped out anaerobic life forms. Eventually, oxygen built in a buildup in the atmosphere, allowing for formation of ozone, protecting organisms from solar radiation. Excessive photosynthesis eventually led to the development of snowball Earth. The entire Earth was covered with glaciers. Evolution of the oceans, earth cooled, water vapor condensed, rain fell, and water collected in low-lying areas. Volcanic eruptions caused rainwater to be slightly acidic. Surface weathering rates increased. Products of chemical weathering increased salinity in the oceans. Oceans are the reservoirs for carbon dioxide, prevent earth from a runaway greenhouse effect like Venus. Carbon dioxide is locked up in limestone and hard parts of marine organisms. The White Cliffs of Dover, these prominent chalk cliffs composed largely of tiny shells and marine organisms such as Formanifera. Pre-Cambrian is divided into the Archaean Eon, the ancient era, the Proterozoic Eon, early life. Knowledge of this time is limited because much of the rock record has been destroyed. 
Earth's first continents, oceanic crust, mostly basalt, relative density of 3 grams per cubic centimeter. Continental crust, mostly silica, rich rocks, granite, relative density 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. Making first, Earth's first continents, making continental crust, low density silica rich minerals were distilled from Earth's mantle through partial melting. melting. Crustal fragments formed in volcanic island arcs and hot spots. These rocks at Isua Greenland, some of the world's oldest, have been dated to 3.8 billion years old. From continental crust to continents, these crustal fragments collided and created to form larger masses as multiple accretion events eventually formed large crustal blocks called cratons. A shield is a portion of the modern craton exposed at the surface. By the end of the Archean, 85% of modern continental crust had formed. So here we have these volcanic arcs, and then these are on little plates. And as subduction occurs, um, bands of ocean are, are removed, the continent starts to collide with the continent and, and forming, uh, forming these cratons. Cratons and shields, the red ones are the Archean, the older cratons. Uh, the yellow, the Proterozoic cratons, and the modern-day Phanerozoic cratons are the brown portions. Making North America is by piecemeal sun blaze a continent between 3 and 2.5 billion years ago. Cretion numerous small crustal units, superior and the current ray cratons, for example, were created together. About 1.9 billion years ago, collision of the Trans-Hudson Mountain Belt. During the Mesozoic and Cenozoic areas, several terrains were created onto the western margin of North America, the North American Cordillera. So here, we had Superior and Trans-Hudson accreted, and then they created with the Harn Ray, okay, and then some of these others later after that. Supercontinents of the Precambrian. Supercontinents are large land masses that consist of all or nearly all existing continents. Pangaea was most recent, recent but Rodinia preceded it. Rodinia formed about 1.1 billion years ago, split apart 600 to 800 million years ago. So here's what Rodinia looked like. Okay. Africa is at the South Pole. Supercontinent cycle. The supercontinent cycle is the splitting and reassembling of supercontinents. Impacts Earth's continents, includes global climate, contributes to sea level rise and fall. Supercontinents, mountain building and climate. As continents move, ocean circulation patterns change, influencing climate. Examples, the Antarctic glaciation. Mountains created by collision of continents change regional climate. Example, Sierra Nevada forest versus the Great um, Basin Desert. So here, oceanic circulation 50 million years ago brought warm seawater to the coastal areas of Antarctica, keeping the continent nearly ice-free. But later on, South America broke away and allowed for a west uh, wind drift that blocked the warm currents from Antarctica and it started to glaciate. Supercontinents and sea level changes. When the rate of seafloor spreading is high, warm ocean crust displaces seawater, causing sea level to rise. When the rate of seafloor spreading is low, cool ocean crust sits lower in the ocean basin, causing sea level to fall. The Phanerozoic encompasses 542 million years. Okay, that's where modern continents are formed divided into the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic eras. The beginning of the Phanerozoic is marked by the appearance of life forms with hard parts, shells, scales, bones, or teeth. At the start of the Paleozoic, North America was a barren lowland. Periodic shallow seas invaded the continents, left behind deposits of limestone, shale, and sandstone. Formation of Pangaea. Laurasia was a vast northern continent composed of North America, Europe, Siberia, and smaller crustal fragments. Tropical land masses that led to the formation of swamps, which converted to coal. Gondwana was a vast southern continent, composed of South America, Africa, Australia, Antarctica, and India. Gondwana migrated northward and collided with Laurasia to form Pangaea. The accretion lasted about 300 million years to form several mountain belts, formed the Caledonian, the Appalachian, the Ural Mountains. Pangaea reached its maximum size about 250 million years ago. So Gondwana is down here. These continents collided to form Laurasia, and then, then Gondwana collided with Laurasia to form Pangaea. Mesozoic history changes the sea level. Early in Mesozoic, much of the land was above sea level. By the middle Mesozoic, seas invaded western North America. Coal formation in western North America by late Mesozoic, shallow seas encroached on much of western North America, led to the formation of coal swamps. Cretaceous coal deposits are economically important to us. Break up of Pangaea about 185 million years ago, a rift developed between North America and Africa marked the start of the Atlantic Ocean. 
westward moving North Atlantic plate began to override the Pacific plate, resulting in a wave of deformation along the western margin of North America. Formation of the North American Cordillera, subduction of the Therian plate, led to 100 million years of volcanic activity. Granitic plutons of Sierra Nevada, Idaho Bathwick, and British Columbia's coastal range um, Bathwick. For example, subduction of the Therian plate also led to the piecemeal addition of crustal fragments. Exotic terrains were added. Late Mesozoic layer mitorogeny led to development of the Rocky Mountains. Cenozoic history represents a considerably smaller fraction of geologic time compared to the Mesozoic and Paleozoic eras. More is known about this era because the rock formation is more prevalent and widespread. Eastern North America, stable continental margin, abundant marine sedimentation, most extensive development around the Gulf of Mexico. The Appalachians eroded to a low plain. Isostatic adjustment raised the region and rejuvenated the rivers. Western North America, the Laramide orogeny was coming to an end. The erosional forces lowered the Rocky Mountains and filled the basins with sediment. A large wedge of sediment created the Great Plains. Twenty million years ago, a broad region from Nevada to Mexico experienced crustal extension. So intentional forces create fault block mountains that form the basin and range province. Entire Western North America interior uplifted, re-elevating Rocky Mountains and rejuvenating many Western rivers. Many spectacular gorges such as the Grand Canyon were created. Volcanic activity was common. Basaltic plateaus formed in Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. The last 2.6 million years was dominated by glacial and interglacial cycles. Earth's first life. The oldest fossils are 3.5 billion years old. Microscopic fossils similar to cyanobacteria found in chert deposits. Chemical traces suggest life may exist 3.8 billion years ago. Origins of life. The amino acids are essential molecules for proteins. Many hypotheses for the formation of amino acids include synthesization from ultraviolet light, synthesized from lightning strike, brought to Earth from asteroids, or developed from hydrothermal vents or hot springs. Earth's first light are prokaryotes, first known organisms for single-celled bacteria, prokaryotes which lacked a nucleus. Early prokaryotes were anaerobic, didn't need oxygen. Later prokaryotes used solar energy to synthesize organic compounds as producing their own food. Photosynthetic cyanobacterial light like prokaryotes lived in layered mats on top of mounds called stromatolites. We talk about oldest fossils. So here's the fossil stromatolites. Evolution of eukaryotes. Eukaryote cells contain a nucleus, more advanced than prokaryotes. All plants and animals are eukaryotes. Multicelled organisms did not evolve to 1.2 billion years ago. First primitive marine animals did not evolve until 600 million years ago. Here's that Edicarin fossil. Paleozoic starts with the Cambrian period. Spectacular variety of life forms. All major invertebrate groups first appear in the Cambrian. Expansion of biodiversity is coined the Cambrian explosion. Early Paleozoic life forms, the Cambrian period was the golden age of trilobites. The Ordovician period marked the appearance of abundant cephalopods, highly developed mollusks. Early diversification driven by emergence of predators. Here's a picture of fossilized trilobites. These guys had, had eyes and lenses on either side of the head that actually had slightly overlapping regions of vision and gave them the first 3D vision of, of any uh, creatures. Here's some picture artist tradition of the Ordovician seas where you see different kinds of marine organisms. First land plants evolved 400 million years ago, evolved to tap, adapt on living on land, obtain water, and stay upright against gravity. So in the Silurian period, small upright growing vascular plants began to invade the land. Then in the Devonian period, first tree-sized plants become common. And in the Mississippian period, we start having forests. Vertebrates moved to land. Lobe finned fishes adapted to land became first amphibians, who used fins to move from one pond to another. Amphibians are not fully adapted to life out of the water. They're born in the water with gills and a tail. As adults, they're air breathing with legs. There's a lobe finned fish, an early amphibian. Um, they had similar uh, bone structure. Reptiles, the first true terrestrial vertebrates. Reptiles were better adapted to live on land. They have waterproof skin and shell covered eggs. This primitive Aquariums limited, eliminated the need to reproduce in water. Great Permian extinction, the most significant mass extinction over the past 500 million years. 70% of land dwelling species were extinct. 96% of marine organisms went extinct. Ultimately created more diverse biological communities. Several causes, volcanic activity and asteroid impact. Gymniosperms, the dominant Mesozoic trees. Gymniosperms are cycads, conifers, and ginkgos became the dominant trees in the Mesozoic. 
did not need freestanding water for fertilization. Fossil gymnosperms in the Arizona's Petrified National Park. So here's the fossilized, fossilized gymnosperms that are actually petrified wood. And here's a modern day gymnosperm. Reptiles dominate the land, sea, and sky. First reptiles were small, but they evolved rapidly. Dinosaurs evolved into large and small organisms, herbivorous and carnivorous organisms. Pterosaurs, pterosaurs had numerous wings that allowed for rudimentary flight. Ancestors to modern birds, like Archaeopteryx, had feathered wings of reptilian characteristics. Other reptiles returned to the sea. Archaeopteryx, he had reptile features such as a toothed beak, winged claws, um, long tail of vertebrae, but bird features such as, as feathers on the wings and tail feathers. Reptiles on land, sea, and sky still. Reptiles were a dominant terrestrial organism in the Mesozoic. Many went extinct at the end of the Mesozoic. In the Cenozoic, mammals replaced the reptiles as dominant land animals. Angiosperms, flowering plants with seeds, replaced gymnosperms as dominant plants. Strongly influenced by evolution of birds and mammals, who helped tra um, transport pollen and seed. From reptiles to mammals, earliest mammals coexisted with dinosaurs in the Mesozoic, small nocturnal rodent-like creatures. Mammals are distinct from reptiles, give birth to live young, have mammary glands, and warm-blooded. They can occupy more diverse habitats than cold-blooded creatures. Marsupial and placental mammals, marsupials are born at stage of early stage of development. After birth, juveniles enter a mother's pouch to complete development. The centrals are born later in development, the young are comparatively mature. So here's those cute marsupials. Humans are mammals with large brains and bipedal locomotion. Several populations of anthropoids develop, diverged seven or eight million years ago in Africa. One line produced modern apes, the other line produced several varieties of human ancestors. Good fossil evidence in cemetery basin in Africa. The genus Australopithecus shows skeletal characteristics of both ape-like ancestors and modern humans. Upright posture and bipedal locomotion correlates with leaving forest habitat and moving to open grasslands. Here's uh, the toy eye footprints. Many species of genus Homo, there's Homo habilis, Homo erectus. Homo sapiens originated in Africa 200,000 years ago. Many large mammal extinction. Many mammals diversify into very large organisms. Examples are five meter tall hornless rhinoceros. Rhinoceri, Macedons, Mammoths. Most large mammals went extinct in the Pleistocene. Early humans may have contributed to the demise through hunting practices. Cute picture of mammals. The end of the chapter.